Thanks very much, Crichton. I hope you're all finding the evening as informative and entertaining as I am. And I hope you're all learning some New Zealand sign language as a side benefit of being here tonight. There's a, there's a great local sign for Semenov, which I learned earlier on, which I'm sure Harry will share with you later, if you're interested. And of course, Stan Semenov is our next speaker. I think it would be an understatement to say that Stan is a well-known local businessman, and as former mayor of Whangarei, he claims responsibility for the town basin, Kensington Stadium, the new Hartia Bridge, new roading, and so much more. Stan is keen and ready and interested in getting back into action and getting our town thriving once again. So please welcome Stan Semenov. As you have heard, most of my vision started 20 years ago, and a lot of that has been done to date. So I've taken a plain Jane approach to make sure that the council's not paying and uh, the either NZTO paying or private sector. This is Portland turnoff. There's been this has been on the agenda for many many years. Now with all the increases of trucks on the road, uh, we need to change it in, in a big hurry. So uh, we need to make sure that that happens very quickly. A tidy up of the entrance in the town, uh, north and south, get rid of the gorse, plant it with greenery, and that could be done by some of our willing unemployed, and we should be proud of our town. Now, back from, from, uh, from up to Spettings Road, with the increase for trucks and that, uh, intimidating for a lot of the traffic on the road, and we should decrease that to 50 k's to make it more safer. That 40 miles an hour. Okay, this is the town basin. We, we should turn everything into the town basin so we can clip the ticket better instead of letting them go up the western outlet. And we should uh, have this done immediately so that we can get more activity in the town basin and in, in, in the CBD. This is the uh, I, I station. And I think we should change that so stop everyone that goes to Russell stopping for a cup of tea and a pee and not even buying petrol in town so we can clip the ticket and make sure that they are coming into town. Hunter Vasa, uh, yes, I was indicated to Hunter Vasa, Hunter Vasa. There was no intention that council should pay. I believed it then and uh, believe it now that it should be done outside council for, for the... Uh, the money for this, and had I not been kicked out the, first, the six years I was in, uh, would have been built at the town basin. This is uh, the town basin, which is part of what we did in my time, and at the end of it, we bought the AMP there for the new four-star hotel, which a lot of us have spoken about tonight, and I congratulate those councils that see that. So that's what it's about, that down there. This is uh, about unemployment in the town, and uh, we, we need to take note and, and try and encourage uh, people to come north and uh, try and create activity so we can get some of these shops working again. Now this is uh, the, the downtown CBD and everyone's saying tonight you know, how it's getting untidy and I think we, we've got to pay a bit more attention to it and try and update it a bit and try and get it more tidy so we can get more activity and people coming into town. This, this is um, taking the police out of, out of the police cars instead of driving around and putting them more on the beat and uh, I think that needs to happen and communicate with the young people and not just lock them up and knock them around a bit. We need to commu com com communicate with the young ones. Now this is... Um, Downtown, we, we, we need uh, more parking for the uh, camper vans that uh, go through town and don't, we don't clip the ticket. We should have them downtown. We should have them downtown so they can have a coffee at the town basin and utilise a lot of that area down there. Now, this is... I like to run uh, free buses between Okara and the CBD to see if we can sort of interconnect and try and get the spend back into CBD and where they can park down the other end and come back and go back and hopefully that will sort of turn things around in the CBD. You got, that's right, it's nothing free, but if you don't try, you never know, mate. This bus here, I like to think it's not a flash bus too, we'll have something a bit plain to Jane, but 
we, with our dysfunctional and, and poverty areas like Otangri and Raumanga, I, I like to see that we run buses to get kids to Kensington Park for sports because some of them can't afford to go to sports and one kid in sport, one less in court. Now this is um, part of Parahaki. I, um, I'd like to think that we can light that up in the tracks so that you know, we could use it at night and uh, make it something that attractive that uh, tourists can use and apart from ourselves. This is, uh, government's got it wrong, they should take the commercial quota back off the commercial people and uh, our own fish guys should have the same uh, numbers we've always had, already had in the future and should have in the future. So that's it. So um, the airport, I, the airport is um, something that we look for, a new area for the airport. I, I have got a place, but I'm going to tell you just in case the land goes up before we purchase it. Um, but with the extra seats on the planes, well, I think we should go for safety and look for a new airport. This here is um, a drifting track. Believe it or not, some of you think it might be a bit of art, some of you art people. But, you know, we've got these kids that are drifting around town and we should go out our way and put something in like we do for our soccer and rugby and hockey, put something in for them, then they've got no reason to be on the streets. This is down at uh, Ruakaka. There's two subdivisions there, 40 million bucks thereabouts spent, and there's only one building on it. I think I should be, go to Wellington, get beside the Prime Minister and Stephen Joyce and Brownlee and others, and say you don't have to go and build more in Auckland. Come north, it's already there, and uh, bring, get some employment for ourselves. Now, that's not a flash train like you saw, like some others. This is a New Zealand train. <laughs> uh, uh, um, and this is the one that comes up but we should update that track so we can get some of these trucks off the road. <laughs> you didn't think that would happen, would you? <laughs> right. This four laning, to me, should come right up to the Brendurans. To leave the Brendurans because it's too costly, then do four laning from this side of the Brendurans right into Whangarei. If you really look at going to Brendurans, Whangarei, we don't have to buy too much land. You can just about put four lanes in there anyway. So that would bring people of those yuppies out of Auckland to the uh, town basin for coffees on the weekends and we should do better out of it. So thank you for the night. I told you mine was plain Jane, it's not expensive. I'm driving it black to the black and that's how you drive it back to the black because we had the big spend in the last 20 years. Thank you. You've been a great audience tonight and we're up to our last speaker. I'd just like to say good on all of the candidates for standing. I think you could it'd be fair to say this is there's an unprecedented level of interest and involvement in the local body elections, which I think tonight really reflects. I think having 11 candidates to choose from is awesome, and I'm really struggling here to differentiate between them. So hopefully you're having a, hopefully you're taking, hopefully you're taking this home to your families, talking to them about who's standing and getting people out there. Hopefully this level of interest translates into votes and participation. Okay, our last speaker tonight, last presenter, last candidate for the mayoralty of Whangarei is. Ash Tadman, also known as Graham. I think, I think he definitely there's a diverse range of candidates standing tonight. I had to squeeze this biography out of Ash slash Graham. Um, and the biography goes as follows. What do I need to say? Everyone knows him. It's Mr. Tadman. No pressure, eh, being the last and all. I'll do my best. Play it away. There we go. Ah, oh, Charles I of England. You've got to love them. This is a painting by Van Dyke. Now, I love it because it's said that he looks every inch the king, except he lost his head, so he wasn't as good as a king should be. That's something I learned about um, reading up on all these famous people. These are all pictures I admired as a child, and I, before I could read, I'd just look and admire them. Oh, now this one, The Descent from the Cross by Peter Paul Rubens. The poor bugger. Look at that. Um, what I love about this is I was raised in faith. I won't say which one. It doesn't matter, but I've been instilled with them. And um, I really admire him for everything he did for us. I, I, I wonder if he'd look at us and think, gosh, you've, you've really done well for me. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Oh, this is terrible. The execution of Lady Jane Grey. She was uh, made Queen of England for nine days, and then she got her head chopped off. I, I feel this could be me in this election. I feel like her. I'm the perfect person for the job, but I fear I will not get it. That's all right. Ah, oh, I think this is the third Earl of Bristol. It's by Gainsborough. 
And um, it reminds me of my dad. That's why I love it. Yep. My dad is a great man. He's a rock. He's everything a man should be. And he's been my teacher. So I appreciate and adore my father. Who else do we have? What's next? Oh, now these are the children of my favourite artist, Thomas Gainsborough. Um, I admire this one because the one in white reminds me of my dear sister who passed away at 12. And every time that I see this, I think of her. We have a portrait of her hanging in our house as well. And I often think, you know, she never got to live the life she got to. So by God damn it, I will do it for her, 100%. <laughs> oh, my mother. Let me tell you about my mother. This is Ingres. He's a great artist. It almost looks like photo. I know we all want to wear the dress. I used to dress in sheets and imagine I was her. But my mother, my mother is an elegant lady and she taught me grace and poise, though I rarely use them. Ah, the Libyan Sybil. Who here has seen the Sistine Chapel? Anyone? Yeah, never have. I'd love to though. Although I think after the restoration it kind of takes away. But there's something about the nobility of someone who's put in a position of power who has the humbleness to, um, I don't know, hold a book. Ah, all right, Lindau. Um, on a serious note, I admire my people. I've had a renaissance in my culture and I now embrace both of them. Um, there was a French explorer many years ago, I can't remember his name, but when he came to New Zealand, he could not fault the Māori family values and their villages. And that is something I think we could all learn from these days and I would like to see that more and more. <laughs> Yay, solo mums! I love them. I have been blessed with a perfect family and I've realised that it doesn't matter what your family is, it's about the foundations that support you as a youth. We need to get back to family, seriously, big time in this community. Ah! Louis the 16th. Oh no, Louis the 14th, the Sun King. Love the heels. I, I wish red heels would come in fashion for men. But he was a great man, but he was a total, you know, just I rule everything, which I think is horrible, which is what you don't want in a leader. You rule everything. Louis the 16th, he was a great king, but he got his head chopped off. So I think it's taking a combination of him plus his great grandfather that I think will make a great mayor. That's me. I'm fairly certain of it. <laughs> Moving on. Ah, oh, Moses, 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 Moses. Charlton Heston is my favorite, a biblical character, by the way. <laughs> However, what I love about this is a man who was told that he could not let his people go but by God, he did it anyway. You've got to admire someone who, when they're told constantly you could never be what you want to be, does it anyway. Amen to that. Ah. Oh. oh, who's this? This is Mrs. Siddon playing the role of the tragic muse. Now, I'm quite the comedian, I know. That comes easy for some of us. Um, but behind every great wit, they say, is true intelligence. Now, I never said that, but I have to agree with it. Ah, <laughs> oh, the Pieta. Mother and child. I, uh, compassion. That's truly what I felt as a child when I used to look at this. It's just, it's absolutely beautiful. Has anyone ever had the chance to see it? Oh, cool. Bring me up some photos. I love to see it from other angles. But I, Renaissance art is truly, truly beautiful. Ah, oh, Cardinal Richelieu. Everyone know him? Probably not. That's all right. I know him because I'm smart as. Now. I was raised in faith, and I had admiration and hopes of becoming a priest myself. In nomine Patre. There we go. But I find that religion is very faulty this day and age. Ah! Oh, now this, now, the sex sells, I was told, so I thought I'd better throw this one in there. <laughs> Peter Paul Rubens. Um, I love this one because I like the horses, would you believe? And then as I grew up, I realized I look like one of those Rubenesque women myself. Um, but this is called the rape of the daughters of someone, I've forgotten, but it's how they used to capture brides. Typical to men, they're just like the Taliban, aren't they? Okay, right. Ah, oh, Sir Thomas More, another great man who stuck to his principles and he got his head chopped off. <laughs> History is full of such irony, don't you find? But you've got to love the velvet sleeves, let's bring them back. Oh, the ecstasy of St. Teresa. Now this is magical. What I love about this one when I used to look at it as a kid was how she was just taken in what she believed. And as I said, I was looking at becoming the priest, so I, I really related to it. Um, but you've got to admire someone who gives um, their life to service. Who's been to my cafe and has had great service? Yeah. Round of applause. Yeah! You know it. Oh, 
this one is purely for the dress. Now, I, I know it's by Gainsborough, and it's got reference to Van Dyke, which was around 100... Never mind. But what I, the sad thing about her is, this is just out of a bit of interest, is that she was holidaying with her Scottish husband in France during the Revolution. She died over there, but to make matters worse, the Revolution has cut it open and destroyed her body. Anyway, this one I love. It's a winter halter, and she's wearing a gorgeous dress, and we all want to wear it. I can't wear white on my wedding day now, so I only admire the picture. Um, but, oh, I think that's my 20, oh God, I hope that's my 20 slides. What is my vision for Fang at A? Well, I never do anything by the rules, never have, never will. Um, but um, I want to make Fang at A as unique as me. Thank you. <laughs> I think it was fortunate you were last, Ash, because that's impossible to follow. That was. Uh... Uh, I'll, I'll just be very brief, because I know you've all been uh, out for a while and you've been very patient. Um, I've got some thank yous to say. First of all, to Ali and Richard, uh, the events and um, venues coordinators here. You guys were fantastic tonight. We couldn't have done this without you. Tony Collins, Chamber of Commerce, who put me in touch with um, the council and, and a number of the candidates down here. Um, Eric Adams and Soundcave for the, all the technical stuff. Fantastic. Uh, Harry and Tanya, Harry freestyled that last um, <laughs> the chuck a chow, which is incredibly difficult to do. So, thanks to Harry and Tanya. Uh, Kim Robinson over in the corner, who um, Damien mentioned at the start, is producing a, a white paper on this event for the deaf community uh, for all his advice on, on what the deaf community needed. Thank you, Kim. Uh, Chris Anderson, who Mission Control down the front there who drove the slideshow and uh, Big Fish Creative for, for all the help putting this together and, and for the um, posters you would have seen around town. Uh, finally, Calder's Design and Print who put up, uh, or who, who printed all the, um, uh, the straw poll ballot forms and also the posters around town. Please remember to, to fill out your straw poll form. There's pens down the front if you haven't got one. Put them in the bin and um, the, the accounts for those will be on the Facebook page tomorrow morning. Uh, and last but not least, Damien Pullen. Our MC, who um, who once again uh, held a pachaka chow night together, uh, can't do it without Damien. Thank you very much. Um, so thank you all very much. Thanks for your patience and thanks to the candidates too. So great job. Thank you. Thank you.